Chapter 1. The Past. In her life, Ellie had done many things, both mundane and extraordinary, but helping Marie say, the sadistic assassin she had trained to relocate, was the most satisfying thing she had done for centuries. It had been no small task to flee unseen from Blackwood's mansion, especially given the level of security he maintained. His guards were something she had never understood. They were well trained, loyal, vigilant, and unnecessary. A waste of resources which could have been put to better use elsewhere. His home was located in a concealed area behind a circle of volcanoes known as Phoenix Landing, a location known only to those who lived and died there and, of course, to the employees of the Courts of Twilight, which Black would like to think he controlled. Nevertheless, despite his superb security, for Ellie, such a minor operation had been simple. She had, after all, travelled not only with skilled people whom this world had never known, but those who, in this time, were remembered as heroes. She eagerly awaited the day of her reunion with Maurice. It would mark the beginning of their greatest adventure. She fought with the curiosity that tempted her to see just how she had settled into her new life, to see if the gradual awakening process had been completed. But until the time came, it would be too dangerous. Blackwood still kept a close vigil for any sign she had made contact. For now, she had to wait. Even when they did meet, Everything would depend on Marise forgiving her for sealing her away in the darkness. Marise had needed to remain hidden in order for things to revert to how they were before she had existed. Otherwise, what must come to pass could never be. The time of their reunion grew ever closer. Soon their journey would begin, and then the people of the world would learn their true place. Ellie looked at herself objectively as she fastened her long hair into a twisted bun. Her hair was by far her most striking feature. Even now, as she checked it for any imperfections, her gaze was drawn to its vivid blue colour, a shade that remained a constant reminder of the ancient punishment she had received. She had grown accustomed to it over time, but the same could not be said for any who looked upon her. Even as she studied herself critically within the surface of the mirror, she knew Blackwood was finally taking action. The idea, which had been prompted by just the right source, had finally bloomed in his feeble mind. It was a solution so obvious, he could not understand why he had failed to consider it before. In that moment of inspiration, he had sent a guard to summon her, a guard who would arrive at any second. All of a sudden, he had been filled with optimism. Just when he had been about to abandon all hope of finding her, the idea had finally come to fruition. Although it had taken longer than had been anticipated, she had been ready to leave for days. She had expected him to reach the conclusion far sooner, but he could be a little slow sometimes. Subtlety was not something he understood well. She knew, as she sat waiting for the messenger to reach her chamber, Her need for patience was almost over. And how did she know the guard was on his way to her? It was simple. She knew everything. Lord Blackwood has requested your presence immediately, the guard barked the order, flinging open the door without so much as a knock. Seeing her angry stare, he felt himself retreat slightly. None of the guards liked to address Blackwood's daughter. If asked why, they may venture it was her unnatural hair or her strange purple-shaded eyes. More likely, however, was that their ancient instincts recognised she didn't seem quite human. Despite this fear, they also respected.